So do you guys remember when I told you how much of a complete idiot I was when I was 18 and I met up with a complete stranger on the internet? <laughs> if you can't remember, BAM! Here's a follow up story for that. He ended up being uh, acquaintances or friends with my um, ex's brother because he was a drug dealer. Well. My ex said he was a drug dealer. I don't consider you a drug dealer if all you sell is weed. So, <laughs> yeah. He just texted me saying, oh, hey, um, you want to hang out? You, do you just want to go drinking um, after work? And I'm just, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if it was like either he finished work or if I finished work, but I think it was when I finished work and um, I was like, yeah, sure, why not? We decided to meet up at this bar I told my ex that um, I couldn't uh, join in on this friggin' LAN party that night because I was meeting, um, I guess I can say his name because uh, I, like, we have no mutual friends, we're not friends on any social networking sites, you know, I'm, you know, my friend will not have a profile, like, you know, face, fucking Facebook profile of it, and also I haven't talked to him in maybe four years, so yeah, his name was Cody. I told him, oh hey, um, I'm only gonna go, you know, I'm only gonna have a, like two drinks and then I'm gonna go back home because I, I am really broke because um, I was in a really bad living situation and um, like, you know, after I paid for my electricity and my groceries and my fucking, all, all my other fines and fucking bills, um, I only had like three dollars spending money left at the end of the week, like, I had enough money to live, I just didn't have enough money to just kind of like frivolously or carelessly spend money, so, what was it, anyways, and also I had to pay for like hospital bills and all that shit, so, because I got sick all the time from worrying and once I worried myself so much I ended up getting hives, so I, I don't know how the fuck that happened, but yeah, anyways, no, back to the story, um, I said, hey, I'm only going to go out for two drinks, and then I'm going to go back home, and um, at the time I was living with my ex, and um, yeah, like I said, really bad family situation, so don't want to go into too much detail about it. We had maybe, what was it, he gave me like a little swig of his fucking whiskey out of his flask, and I had two bottles of maybe, Sm I think it was Sm Smirnoff, I don't know, I just remember it was vodka. And then he says, hey, do you want to play on the pokey machines? And I just said, um, no, I'm not that much of a gambler. And I have really bad luck, as you can tell from my living situation and my family life and my relationship life or love life. So, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, well, okay, suit yourself. Um, I'm going to go on the pokey machines. And he played on it, and just instantly he just started winning money. I don't know how much money he won on the first try, but I just he just said, "Well, yeah, since I won this money, I guess we could, um, you know, I guess we could, I could give you a couple of drinks." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, man." So, um, what was it? The bartender said, "Oh, since you won, um, I'm gonna give you. It's you know, we're obligated to <laughs> give you three dollars, three extra dollars." <laughs> to spin and he goes, okay, sure. And, um, but it was just really weird. Like, he won twice that night. There was something really trippy about that fucking pokey machine in Rotorua. And, um, yeah, this is, a this is in New Zealand. This is in Thailand. But, yeah, like, he just kept winning money. And at the end of the night, we had either 21 or $23. And we just, we just, both of us just ended up spending it on alcohol. So, I get a um, text from uh, my ex saying, um, when are you going to be home because, um, you know, I don't want you just kind of like rudely knocking on like the window late at night, like t telling you to open up the door while you're drunk and I'm like, okay. So I said, I'd, you know, I'd be there, I'd be back home in like an hour or two or something. So he goes, okay, cool. Um, that's when I finished the land party. So me and him, well, I mean, I got really drunk that night, but he was just fucking gone. Like, he was away with the fairies. He was smashed. By smashed, I mean, he could barely walk, and he could barely think straight, and I mean, I couldn't barely think straight, and you'll soon hear about that. But we um, ended up walking home, and I was just really worried for him, because he just said, 
Oh, you know, no, you just walk back home. It's, you only live half an hour's walk away. You know, I'm going to walk back home. And I just did not trust him. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to walk with you home because, yeah, you're not in a really good place. Not, I mean, a kind of a hypocrite because I wasn't in a good position either. But at least I could, at least I knew how to cross the road. Cody ended up fucking jumping, like walking in front of cars. And I would have to jump in front of him to stop him from getting fucking hit. This happened maybe three or four times throughout the night. And we went past the park or the lakefront. A couple of teenagers were calling out on us for getting drunk. Hey, do you want some weed? Why would you like scream that at the top of your lungs, like across the road? Oh, yeah, you got a point. Are you guys cops? Like, oh my fucking god. He said, no, no, we're not. Like, they're a bunch of fucking teenagers. I was, I was, I was being sarcastic. Oh, he did offer me weed that night. Yeah, I, I declined when he offered me it in in the bar. And like, I'm not trying to say like I'm a, I'm a stoner or anything. Uh, I am a complete noob when I'm when it comes to stoning. I I don't know how to smoke it, you know. So, but yeah, nonetheless, yeah, I just kind of a fucking idiot. We end up walking, and we've been, we were walking for maybe like, maybe 20 minutes or an hour, and we go to this gas station, and it's not before, he almost gets hit by a fucking car, and I buy some water or some bubble gum, or yeah, I buy some water to like help him just kind of like sober up a bit, and I... I buy some bubble gum and it was like night it was 90 cents and I just I was so drunk I couldn't even count it I had 10 cents I had a, like a, just a bunch of 10 cents in my hand and I was just staying really drunk in 20 Dude, and then just the cash register said, just do you want me to just fucking count it for you? You shouldn't say, you know, the F word, and I was like, yeah, sure, man. So she ended up counting it for me, and I got some chewing gum, and right beside the petrol station, the gas station, or fucking Caltex or Shower, I can't even remember the fucking gas station, but near Owen's house, my family friend, there's a tile store, and he ended up passing out in front of the tile store. So I, I just called my ex, and I just said, hey, um, you just like I, I really feel bad for asking this but Cody is just completely gone uh, do you mind if you help him get home safely and so yeah he left he left the house and it was a really far walk from where we were like maybe an hour or something so he goes yeah sure bad luck um, maybe 20 or 30 minutes into our his little uh, coma a cop comes <laughs> and I just started freaking out and he just said excuse me ma'am how much have you been drinking tonight it's like oh, I can't, can't remember just couldn't even look at him and he just said um well your friend is really really drunk uh can you tell me the name of the bar that yeah can you tell me the name of the bar that uh got you guys really really intoxicated this intoxicated for you to walk and pass out in front of this tile store I, I, I can't really remember the name I really wanted to go back to win the <laughs> to win at the pokey machine but it, I'm, I'm kidding no I just I just didn't want to get in trouble and I just didn't want to be a snitch I'm riding in the fucking what was it front passenger seat and he's riding in the back and then he said oh Cody says excuse me and he jumps out of the car and he starts throwing up outside this power pole and so, I'm texting my ex and I said, oh hey, you don't need to come pick me up anymore. <laughs> and oh, he's going to be so, he, he must have been so mad that night. I never asked Cody how far he lived. It turns out he lived maybe a half hour's drive away from town. So I'm so glad that that cop came to drive us home. So I said, could you just drop me off at my dad's house? Because I knew my dad was working. And um, he, he doesn't come back from until maybe like 11 o'clock at night and it must have been 9 or 10 o'clock that night and I still had the house keys so um, he drops me off at my house and um, I had I have a really bad experience from walking home late at night so I asked my ex to come and walk me home I was at home and while I was walking with Cody he was smoking pot so I don't know why, but 
I just ended up getting really, really hungry and I just ate a whole pack of Tim Tams. And I was watching TV at my house when my dad wasn't there and he had he was just completely unaware I was at the house. Eli comes into the house and he said You've been smoking weed, haven't you? And I went, no. And he goes, I can smell it on you. It's like, that's because I was walking Cody home and he was stoned. And he goes, look at me in the eyes and tell me you haven't been smoking weed. I'm like, I haven't been smoking weed. So I just went, I don't know why, but I'm really, really hungry. And he just starts laughing. I'm like, what's so funny? is like, you are completely stoned. And I'm like, I'm not. So anyways, I've... And so, what was it? I was like, God, I've eaten like a whole packet of Tim Tams, I'm still hungry. And I hate Tim Tams, and he just starts laughing even harder. So he ends up walking me home.